like I said, the problem I was having was I was kind of lunging over it a little bit too much with my right side. So I knew right off the bat that I had to find a way to feel like my arm plane in the shaft was a little shallower in transition. Yeah. So I worked really hard on trying to find ways to lay the shaft down, lay the sweet spot back. A lot of those buzzwords that we've heard in sure. the past. But the problem that I ran into was that as I started to do that, sure, the transition looked a lot better. But what happened was the club kept tipping underneath for too long. So I ran into the same issue that I had even when I was coming Okay, over. so let's take a step back. And one of the drills that we talked about earlier in the, in the series was sort of this actual going backwards. So mm -hmm. just real quick, from your own words, what did that feel like to you? Describe that to me. Well, I would just feel like I'm closing the gap between my arms Okay. on the way down. So for a better way for me to explain that, this space that's created between your elbows, Sure. as I'm starting to unwind and open my body up, I felt like I was closing that space. Okay, so basically you would feel like you create some momentum in the shaft this way, and then you were closing the space between your arms. Yes. And you talked about the trouble you ran into. So if you could go to the top real quick, I'm gonna move you around, just so everybody can really see this at home. When you shallowed it a bit, originally, you would actually kind of get your right arm almost too underneath. Exactly, my elbow would dig too much in front as right. well. Right, so, so even though the shaft was shallowing better, you just put your body in a place where you, you still couldn't ever square it up and you would be too late with the face, even with that shallowing Absolutely move. Absolutely right. Okay, so now the way we evolved it was, you still felt like this worked a little bit backwards, but now if you can notice, that right palm is sort of pointing away from you a bit. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now, for you, you're not the type of person that really wanted to eventually de-loft it. We've talked a little bit about that, but again, you already de loft enough, so you kind of felt like, almost like there's some resistance in these hands. Yeah. You still kept a little bit of dish here, but that right palm really felt away, and that lets you shallow it a bit, but then really almost get the club back. We've heard in front of you before, mm. get the club back in front of you feeling. Late in my downswing. Late in your downswing. Yeah. Okay, great. So now, I think a drill that we did a bit was sort of a, a, a split grip drill. Yeah. So let's show everybody that. It's one, one of my favorites because I feel so much pressure out of my right arm, yeah. pressure downward. So what I'll do is just a, just a normal wind up and then as I swing down, I can feel that right arm extending, a lot of downward pressure sort of through my right palm. And then from there, I can feel the face stay nice and passive. Okay. Very interesting. So now you're making this club, you're feeling there's energy that way, but you're doing it in a way where your right arm's not getting underneath as much. Correct. Still feeling like you're in a place where you can kind of push it a little bit. Yep. So you get the shallowing, and then your right side feels like it's on top to where you can get this club back in front of you. You're not trying to pull this left. This is actually starting to kind of have a nice sort of rounded shape in the fall through. Yeah, when I, when, I, when I do it correctly, the feeling for me, it's, it's almost like a V motion with my arms, whereas I feel down, and then up that way as I keep rotating. I remember the, the first center. time we talked about it, and it was sort of a wild feeling for you, but pretty quickly it, it, it sort of caught on and it felt pretty good. Yeah, because I started to feel the speed jump into the club head at the right time. Mm. And so for me, that's another way of describing the club head getting back in front of you. Okay, so why don't you hit a couple of shots? So I'm gonna try and create some down pressure through the arms and club head. Oh, that's beautiful. And I think this down pressure is a really important key because you're feeling like you're putting enough energy early. You're trying to almost get your arms working back this way with it still staying on top. But then that early force is what's allowing you to kind of work around with your body and kind of come up through it. And when I notice when you do this, this is also one of the sort of the nuances at, at first, when you started to have this feeling, you actually would get this motion this way, but you would get your hands sort of in front of your chest. So when we make a backswing, you know, we're lifting our arms up to, you know, while we're rotating, they're getting on the right side of our body. But now if I get this down and my body's not moving at all, my hands can get back into the center of my body and I'm too square at impact. Mm -hmm. Whereas when you demonstrate it, you're getting your arms down, but you're also still opening your body a bit. So your arms are able to get down, but that left side's able to get it out of the way, which allows this left shoulder, as we've learned already, we need this to help soften the bottom and create a little bit of that sort of up force late through the downswing. And that's exactly what I mean when I'm saying feel the V in my arms. Yes. Because the second part of the V is, like you say, it's staying more on the right side of my body as my arms then pull the club out and I turn this way. So I'm definitely not feeling like I'm pulling the arms down that way. That would be absolutely the wrong thing to do. Okay, so speed. We'll start off with a little drill. Okay, okay? let's start off with the drill, sounds good. So this is a drill that Trevor Immelman and myself came up with on the range one day. Okay. And you know, I was talking to him and I was telling him, 
Okay, Trevor, to improve your transition, you got to feel like you're throwing this club back behind you a little bit. It's like you're, you're throwing it as hard as you can and you're trying to rotate, like you're trying to fling it in space almost down to the ground. Okay. And he goes, and we talked, he knows the golf swing really deeply and he knows a lot of these concepts very well. And he came up with the analogy of, oh, you mean like throwing an ax back behind me? And I'm like, ah, sure, that'll work, so right? that answers this question here, because I'm wondering, why is this ax right sure, here? Sure, you guys, you guys may have been- <laughs> Sure, kind of, everyone what, what is, wondering the same thing. Yeah, what's going on with this ax <laughs> in the ground? And, and this is where, through his own understanding of these concepts and logic, he came up with the analogy. So he came up with the drill, actually. Right? Okay, very cool. And that goes to just kind of like how you can use this information to sort of teach yourself in a way, right? right? So he came up with this feeling of, hey, I'm gonna try and throw an ax. And basically what you're trying to do, you know, you got your back swing position. Okay. And you're, you're really trying to keep that sort of upper arm tight to your body, and then really feel like you're trying to throw this, this ax down, back behind you, and down in the ground. Okay. Kind of this aggressive force and torque down on the ground, like you're also rotating it, like you're trying to fling it through the air. Okay. Okay. So it would look a little something like that. All right. Okay. Okay. So cool. that was the feeling. And then, you know, in a golf swing, it'd be it'd really be nothing different. So the same exact thing, right? Like yeah. When we came up with this, we didn't have an axe in the range. So that, that, this <laughs> okay. came after the fact. Okay. So. <laughs> You, know, you go to the top and then you're feeling like you got this ax in your hands. You're gonna feel like you're really sort of throwing this ax back behind you, down and back behind you. And this is a great drill for, for all the people at home who tend to come over the top and hit that slice. It's gonna really help you transition more from the inside. And it's gonna look you know, a little something like this. Yeah. Good swing there. This is a great drill for all of those amateurs that tend to come over the top and hit slices because it's really kind of helping the club come more from the inside. Okay. So if you don't have an axe, pretend like you do. Now, we're talking forces and torque, and you know, I think for most of us, it sounds like it's kind of complicated. Yeah, you know, it's sort of the language, the fancy language of forces and torques, but really, the concept is incredibly intuitive. Okay. This is something you deal with with every part of your life. When you're walking around, picking something up, swinging a bat, throwing a ball, you're always dealing with these forces and torques. So you have tons of reference throughout every aspect of your life to draw upon. And it makes it so sort of intuitive and it will really resonate with you. And then I think when you understand the logic of it, again, it's gonna help you become a great problem solver. And we have some special guests to help us Yeah, so that, today right? we actually have probably the foremost expert when it comes to forces and torques with regards to the golf 